Wondering how to start a brand from China? Today, we got some inspiration for you. Global from Asia, episode 77. Welcome to the Global from Asia podcast, where the daunting process of running an international business from Hong Kong is broken down into straight up actionable advice. And now, your host, Michael Michelini. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in today. It's getting really hot down here in the south of China, mid March. And I'm happy, and I'm not complaining, I'm switching my jeans for shorts. So uh, I hope I'm not making anybody jealous in any cold areas, but uh, it's one of our perks for for being over in this area in the world. I'm also kind of still preparing as best I can for my first ever webinar for this show. It's going to be on April 2nd, which is my birthday, 9 a.m. Hong Kong time. I'll have some gifts and giveaways at the beginning and towards the end, so definitely come in and uh, participate for the timing i was kind of like we're not sure when the best time would be because we uh, we're global here and people in u.s europe and asia so if this time doesn't work for you i know for europe it's gonna be a little bit rough but uh you know if, if you're interested just send me a note at mike at global from asia.com if uh if you were really interested and couldn't make it i'm, I'm taking everything into account so if you want to see more information and sign up check out global from asia.com slash webinar also, you know, I had a great call with Howie, one of our listeners in Canada, and he's working really uh, hard preparing for uh, the summer project of his daughter about Amazon and their own brand, which I think is really awesome. Maybe I'll, I'll learn a little bit from my kid. And uh, it's also been a hot topic, not just with Howie, but other listeners about, you know, finding the right product and lay private labeling. And today we're kind of getting a really good guest here, PJ Entrepreneur. And uh, yes, that's his last name, legally changed to entrepreneur. I have confirmed it myself. He showed me his American passport with entrepreneur. It just shows you how dedicated and passionate he is to entrepreneurship. He's been doing amazing businesses, which he'll, he'll go through. And he came to China in 2009. And uh, I've known him since about that time when he came here with a lot of different startup events. And he's always mentoring and sharing his knowledge with people in China and everywhere around the world. And there's some links and other items that PJ mentions. As always, the show notes are on the blog at globalfromasia.com slash episode 77. Oh, and one more thing. We uh, tried to record this together in person in my home uh, studio here, but there was, for anybody doing business in China, knows there's construction happening and it was loud drilling so we we made the best we could, and we did it outside in my like uh, backyard slash garden of my uh, apartment complex. So a little bit of background noise, but uh, I think we had we got it pretty good. But uh, just a little bit of heads up, but it keeps the show interesting, right? So without further ado, let's get PJ on the show. <laughs> All right, thank you everybody for tuning in to uh, Global from Asia podcast. We are here in uh, my backyard <laughs> in Shenzhen, China with a friend of mine, PJ Entrepreneur. Thank you for being here, PJ. Hello, uh, thanks for inviting me. Sure, glad to be here. Glad, thanks for coming out. And we're going to focus today on branding in China and distribution from China, which you've been doing for many years while you've been here. But maybe first, you can introduce yourself to everyone. Yeah, my name is uh, PJ Entrepreneur. Before, I was called Paul Jones. And then I changed my name legally to PJ Entrepreneur or Paul Jones Entrepreneur. I developed, helped some Chinese people develop a brand of men's clothing, starting with underwear called Paul Jones. And that became pretty successful, sold on platforms like eBay and Alibaba, AliExpress and Amazon. Well, that's great. I mean, uh, there's tons of, we'll get through more as we go through the interview. And uh, so, yeah, like we said, we're going to focus on the branding and distribution. So maybe first, do you want to maybe define what is maybe a brand? Because maybe especially maybe some Chinese listeners might not really, I think, understand fully what a brand is. Well, the first thing is you have to come up with a good name and you should have a domain name that matches that brand. Or if you can't get the exact match, you should have the, the match of the name plus, say, clothing or something like that. So when people are searching on it, that your website is going to come up on top. But the brand is very important because you can add value based on the brand name. Otherwise, you're just like everybody else, a commodity product. And then it's sort of the race to the bottom, who can have the cheapest price. And of course, in the end, no one makes any money. 
Yeah, I think we we have both witnessed that in in China. I think maybe it's baked in the culture, but I think that a lot of times the way they Chinese compete is by being cheaper or lowering the price. They, they, they think it's still a new idea for this idea of a brand and, and value add. So maybe maybe give some more ideas of, of, of some pricing strategy. Well, you know, sometimes people like to buy things that are not the cheapest. There's a, you know, not everybody wants the cheapest thing. So if you create a brand and you create value for that brand, and a lot of that sometimes can be done with the packaging or the advertising or even the description where you find some unique specs that apply to your product that maybe also apply to the other ones, but nobody's talking about, you can sort of stand out as uh, being a little bit better. Okay, and then for 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 distribution, I think Amazon is is what we had t- talked before the before the show. Uh, what what are your ideas for getting that brand out into the market? Well, once you create a brand, you can use Amazon, and it's called FBA fulfillment by Amazon, and you can actually put your stock into Amazon. Uh, And Amazon will take care of everything, including the customer service. So you can focus on building the brand. And basically, you just need to take care of the shipments from the factory, you know, in this case would be, you know, from China and get it into Amazon and launch your product. Make sure you have good feedback. And I'm working on some things where I'm going to help to teach people how to do this type of thing. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, we'll definitely link link that up or at the show notes. So then you said F- FBA, that's, is that for fulfillment f- by Amazon? Fulfillment. So, but then you mentioned, maybe you can explain that program a little bit for those that aren't familiar. Well, basically what, what happens is you can put your goods into Amazon and then when an order comes in, Amazon will fulfill it and put it in their package and sometimes mix it with other goods. If they're a prime member, they can get free shipping and people are getting used to buying on Amazon. And uh, it's actually the largest search engine in the world for buyers looking for things, because if you contrast that to Google, people are not always looking to buy when they're on Google. But they're, if they're in Amazon, generally they're looking to buy, maybe not that day, but they're there because they want to buy something. Definitely, totally, totally true. And I think, I think a lot of people don't think of Amazon as a search engine. They think of it like as a as a as a as a website to buy stuff. But actually, it is, it is a massive search engine. Well, not only is it a search engine, but they also compete with Google when it comes to advertising. So if somebody's looking for a certain product, you can have an advertisement for your product on Amazon or even off of Amazon for that product and it appear with when they're searching for that type of product. And it's very, very powerful because the people on there are buyers. And I've seen some really, really incredible returns uh, spending small amounts of money and generating thousands of dollars, you know, from, from an ad campaign. Well, that's, that's great. So it's, so it's kind of like Google Ad, AdWords for Amazon. Yeah, but in, in with Google AdWords, it's very, very expensive. You're lucky if when you make a sale that you break even on the first sale and you hope to make it up on future sales. But with Amazon, uh, I, I've seen some things where people are making very big money from investing a few hundred dollars and selling more than $5,000 worth of goods. Yeah. Wow, that's pretty amazing. And is that is it normally by click or by by impression or uh, it's it's by the click okay great and so we're we talk yeah we compare with that with Google and so so if somebody getting started on Amazon maybe they're listening today and they have an idea for a brand or a product what what would they do to get started well there's a lot of courses out there teaching people how to do Amazon things but I'm working with some people that have had big success in building brands and I think that's one of the most important things to success. It's not just putting a product on Amazon, it's putting a product out there and getting featured on Amazon so that when people are searching for that product that they come across your product and then they buy it. Got it. So I hope I don't go overhead over the heads of some listeners, but I'm familiar with ASIN, which is I think Amazon's like SKU number. And uh, so a lot of times what people do is they sell, they see that product that they have that's on Amazon and then they just say they can also sell that product and then put their price. Yes, you, you, can, you can do that as well. But really the way to make big money on Amazon is to create a product 
and create benefits that are unique to other, other products uh, on there. And sometimes you can do that by taking a look at the feedback. And when you hear things that people complain about, you can do something to uh, eliminate that pain point for your product. Got it. That's really smart. Any tool for that? Or I guess you're basically just searching, probably the idea would be search in Amazon, find products that you are interested to sell and read the feedback. Well, there's, there's a lot of tricks to doing it. And there's, there's a process that you go through when you're, when you're building a brand. It's, it's too in-depth to go into yeah. here. But I, I'm working on some, some things where I, I'm going to be, uh, you know, teaching this in public forums and, and possibly also on video. So if anybody's interested, all you have to do is uh, contact me and I'll be sure that you know what's available and, and uh, you know, help you along the way and, and give you real stories of real things that are happening on eBay. And it's really pretty amazing, uh, not just my stories, but other people do some really, really incredible things that you never thought was possible. Also, the volume is really mind-boggling sometimes when someone is telling you how many pieces they're selling in a day of some item where they might sell a thousand pieces a day and, you know, making five dollars a piece profit, things like that. It can happen and it can happen to somebody who's, you know, working out of their home. You know, you don't have to have an office anymore. One of the things that I'm looking to do this year is I want to be totally location independent. As long as I have a good connection, I can pretty much work from anywhere. In fact, today, you know, we had some construction noise in the, in the studio where we were going to do this. So right now our studio is out in the garden uh, by Mike's home. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's definitely becoming a massive trend. Just work work anywhere. As long as you have an Internet connection and, and a laptop, you can work as if you were... Uh, you know, in the office. So it, technology is amazing, right? It's, yeah, uh, it really is. And, uh, you know, I, I do some speaking sometimes in universities. Uh, you know, last weekend I was uh, speaking to about 70 students in a university in Karachi. And I was on my way to some place. And unfortunately, the, the transportation was slow. So I, it was my time to, to speak. And so I got off and uh, stopped in a park. And I did the whole thing from a park. You know, with my 4G from China, speaking to a whole room full of people in Karachi. And it's really pretty amazing. And I'm doing more and more of that stuff. And then people are connecting with me on Facebook and creating groups and discussions. And it's really, really very exciting. And, and what I do mostly is, is I connect people. You know, about five years ago when I came to China, I pretty much retired and, and wanted to just come here, build connections and... Uh, create opportunities. And I've helped many, many people in China to build their business. For me, that's the fun part. It doesn't always have to be my success. If somebody's having success, I'm pretty happy. And one of the things with the, with the Paul Jones, it actually came up uh, sort of by accident. Somebody was having a problem with a brand selling Paul Smith underwear. And, uh, you know, there was an issue with the branding. And I made some ca crazy comment. It's like, why don't you call it Paul Jones? And they said, oh, would you let us do that? And I said, well, let's try it. And I had no idea that it was going to turn out to be a success. And it, it turned out to be a huge success. There's, you know, literally over a thousand items right now in the clothing line and being sold all over the world. It's pretty amazing. I, I know before the show you mentioned there's a shop, Paul Jones, in, in the Philippines. That... Yeah, in the Philippines is actually where the whole idea started out. I had a, a call center and, and a, basically a place where I did my advertising for AdWords. I had about 50 people working there. And when I decided to close all my offices and, and come to China and just kind of retire, uh, I had people that worked for me that they were my friends. And so when I shut the office down, of course, I'm feeling bad that these people have to look for jobs. And... Um, I did an experiment. I happened to be in Bangkok, and in Bangkok, they sell underwear, men's underwear on the street. And uh, so I bought like 50 pair, and I, and I brought it to Philippines. And um, I told the guy, I said, I want to experiment to see if we can sell it on Facebook. So they put it up on Facebook, and within a week, they sold 50 pair. And so then they contacted me and said, okay, can you, can you bring some more of that back? And I said, well, I'm in Hong Kong now, so I, I can't do it because that came from Bangkok. But I said, it all really comes from China anyhow. So it was like the day before Christmas. So I said, okay, for your Christmas present, I'm going to go to China and I'm going to track down where to buy that. And 
Anyway, I, I met this woman who uh, at the time was 27 years old, selling on, on eBay and doing many millions of dollars in sales. And I became friends, and that's how we got into the uh, the Paul Jones. I just happened to be there at the right time, and a comment came up, and, and we tried it, and the next thing we know, there's, there's a brand. From there, we they asked me to help them with another brand had to do with, um, with women's uh, dresses, prom dresses, things like that. And the brand that they had was actually was pretty successful. They were selling 100 dresses a day, but they wanted to be more successful, so... It took me about a week. I learned a little bit about the business because I really know nothing about fashion, but there's nothing I won't try. So I spent about a week and I learned about the factories and learned about dresses. And I came up with a name and then they, we, we got the domain name and they took that name. And three and a half years later, they're selling way over a thousand dresses a day. And now uh, the same group of people that are, that are selling online, mostly on eBay, Amazon, and Alibaba, AliExpress, are coming out with some other brands. And of course, as we do this, we're learning you know, from our previous mistakes how to make it even better and how to deal with the trademark issues and so forth. But it's really been very, very exciting and, and also working with many, many other factories, helping them develop brands. And it's a, it's a very rewarding thing when you can help somebody develop a brand that really creates value and allows them to keep their profit margins up and the prices up and even create brands uh, different levels. Like some people love to pay a lot of money for something because they feel that it's better. Now, it needs to have good quality, but some people feel better when they pay more money for it. And so you need to take advantage of that. And other people are buying on price. So you need to have a, a lower range, but it does not have to be the cheapest. I hope uh, I hope listeners are taking note because, uh, yeah, if you if you I, I hear the, I think it's a destroying <laughs> destroying a market sometimes when everybody's just 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 driving prices down to to zero. Uh. Well, in China, you know, sometimes I I feel like it's like a race to the bottom. Who can have the cheapest price and who can make the least amount of money? And in the end, it really destroys the market because what happens is uh, the quality will suffer. It's happened with one product that I've been involved with. Uh, I have a, a website called wheel.cool, and it's a, an electric unicycle. And we, we had very good quality, but what's happening is uh, there's so much competition that the price keeps going down, and what happens is then they put bad batteries and used batteries and many, many problems that basically is going to destroy the whole industry because, you know, people see the price out there, and of course they want the cheap price, but they also want the quality, and they just don't understand. So that's why you have to build a brand and get people to rely on your brand and, and know that it's good and so forth. But, yeah, the the uh, the, the price situation in, in China is, is really unbelievable sometimes on on how little people will will make some people i've even seen them lose money in order to get feedback which to me it doesn't really make sense maybe in the short term it might make sense but i've seen people lose hundreds of thousands of renminbi or even in in dollars doing things like that um, so building a brand is is really where it's at i mean that can set yourself apart from everybody else and it also builds long-term value. Yeah, I totally, totally agree. Uh, a quick story on my side was a friend was doing uh, MP3 players or, like years years ago, American in China, and he bought a container for some reason. I think that's too many. and shipped it to L.A. He said by the time the container arrived, he, his com- source and factory was price selling. The price was down to the same price he bought all of them for. Yeah, that's definitely a big issue. And that's why a lot of things, like for instance, even sending things into Amazon, a lot of times you just use air freight and uh, you just send it in and pay the money. It's expensive, but you can get it in there as you need it. And the whole the whole idea is turning the goods over and, and turning your money over quickly. You can, you can really get things messed up if you send a container and by the time it arrives and clears customs, it might be two months and in markets for some items just change very quickly, especially in electronics and, and mobile phone things like a mobile phone accessory can be hot at one point and, you know, another phone comes out and then nobody wants it. So it's something that you have to uh, be aware of. True. I, uh, yeah, I think 
maybe air freight small quantities for a while or, or, or more just in time? Or? I think you can have a good balance of it once you know what you're doing. But definitely when you're starting out, you need to, uh, you know, manage the inventory and keep the quantities small until you have something that's proven. And then uh, you just got to make sure you keep the stock up in Amazon because really they can move a lot of product and uh, you got to make sure that, that you have the product. Now, I, I know one person who's, who's selling something on Amazon right now and what happens is they sell, send several hundred pieces over there and when the stock drops, what they do is raise the price $5 and it still sells. <laughs> And so some people buy it at a higher price as the stock gets gets out because they don't want to be out of it completely. Uh, and it's a very good strategy. Yeah, no, that makes sense. I, I haven't done inventory uh, business for for a little while now, and that was always a struggle is managing your, your stock because you don't want to be back ordered, And then you're, you're losing sales, plus you're upsetting customers and refunding or 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 worse could happen but yeah, yeah so you raise the price and what happens is you make a little bit more money and the the merchandise might move out a little bit slower but then for instance if on Amazon if you're running ads where people get to see it on sites like CNN or Drudge Report after the fact you can then display that same item to them at the lower price while they're doing their normal browsing so if they didn't buy it the first time they can come back and and buy it at the lower price yeah I it's definitely um, balancing price, uh, you know, kind of, kind of, I feel like it's almost like stock, stock trading. You got to look at your price on Amazon on a regular, regular basis, or is it something you can kind of like, kind of like op optimize or? Well, yeah, there's definitely a, a science to it and there's a whole process to figuring it all out. And that, that's what I'm, I'm in the process of documenting with some other experts that have, you know, have a, a huge following of people that have built brands and, and have incredible stories to tell about how they did it. And, and, and some of the stuff is really very simple to do, but pretty much you can do it from wherever you are in the world. The nice part about Amazon is once you connect with the supplier, and you send your goods over there, they take care of everything. So you, you just have to be worried about developing the product and then making sure that it, it doesn't go out of stock. And there's, you know, there's people that can help you in China that can do that. If you're not in China, there's services that will make sure that everything is taken care of so you can be developing your next product. And you really don't need a whole lot of products to have very, very good income. Sure. Maybe it's a um, question is you talk about like, different types of products should you stick within like one niche or and with multiple products or or does what do you think in there well i always like to stick with things that i know but i've also had success with things that i don't know but i think if you're starting out you should you should try to stick with something that you know or you're passionate about some hobby or you know if you understand that business that would be the best place to start uh but for me i i like to do a lot of different things and so i also think it's good to take something that you don't know at all and come up with new ideas about it. And that's sort of my specialty. Like, I didn't know anything about fashion. I still don't know a whole lot about fashion, but I, I, I um, experiment. And, you know, from experimenting, you see what works and what doesn't work. And every once in a while, you have some big success out of it. And, uh, and, and that's, that's what's happened in this case. So, yeah, I would stick with something that you're really passionate about. That's probably one of the biggest keys to success is passion. And to talk about a, a, a book that is one of my favorites, I recommend to a lot of people. It's, it's called The Element by Ken Robinson, Sir Ken Robinson. It's a fantastic book that will help you understand what your passion is and, and, and what it is and how to use that to change your life. And that, that book is actually available. Um, a friend of mine who I met on Facebook from when I changed my name, a lot of people search on entrepreneur. This is a guy, um, Rehan Alawala from Pakistan. Now, I didn't have any friends from Pakistan. And um, he was one of my first Pakistani friends. And um, we, we got to be very good friends. He owns about 50 companies. And he, and he has a university that he set up. It's an online thing. He does a lot of things to help people in Pakistan when it comes to education, a mobile phone uh, thing to help people read and write. But the, uh, it's called Rehan U, R E H A N U dot com, and then slash audiobooks. And he has a whole library of audiobooks where you can listen or download a PDF from his own personal library. 
and uh, and that book is on there. So you can you know if you want to if you want to listen to it, I think it's out of print. I tried to buy some uh, copies of it recently because I used to give them away to people. You know, if if I felt like they needed it, I would just give them a copy of it. But I haven't been able to find any copies, at least not in Hong Kong. Uh, and uh, I think I checked in China as well because there's a Chinese version. But it's a great book, and uh, you should definitely, yeah. you know, read or listen to it. Yeah, we'll link it up on on the show notes for people if they check that out. So also, yeah, you, I'm I'm curious about Pakistan. So Pakistan is that the how you got involved in Pakistan? Because I see a lot on your yeah. Facebook. Well, I, I um, the voice over IP is something that I'm really interested. In, that you know, that's uh, telephone uh, technology. And in Pakistan, Mr. Rehan Alawala happens to own a company that was the, one of the first that provided telephone numbers from around the world. So you can you can buy a telephone number sometimes for a dollar a month, and then you can have that ring anywhere in the world. So I think he has 50 or 60 countries where he has telephone numbers. And for instance, I, I can be sitting in China and I have a Chicago telephone number that rings on my desk. And when I call out on it, I leave Chicago caller ID. So nobody really knows where I'm at. And the technology is, is pretty amazing. But because of that, that's how I, I met some people in, in Pakistan before him. But really, when I, when I met him, I mean, we, we became such really good friends. We've done some Skype conversations. And eventually, you know, we, we had a lot of conversations. And, and plus, just reading his Facebook posts and, and, and vice versa. Eventually, he was in Singapore one day. So I just jumped on a plane and went over there and met with him and spent a couple of days. And it was really life-changing, I have to say. You know, I, I, I do a lot of things different because of things that I learned from him. He's actually younger than me, but I consider him a mentor. That's great. Yeah. And I've seen you helping a lot, lots of entrepreneurs around the world, right? I mean, you, you definitely are helping everybody in, in all parts of, of the world. One, one thing I've been working on recently is um, uh, a gentleman in, uh, in Pakistan who's actually, he's on the radio and he does something uh, for, for youth, inspiring youth on the radio. And we got talking one day and he was entering a, a startup contest. And so we, we talked about some solar products because they always have blackouts in, in Pakistan. And, you know, for me, I go crazy when my mobile's out of, out of power. So there's some new products that are coming out in China that will charge by the sun and, and give you, uh, you know, backup power for your, your mobile devices and also lights. And, um, we also found a solar light that basically is going to retail for about $6. So we set up a program so even the poorest of the poor can get into the solar energy business. And he calls it Global Solar Innovations. And um, we're, we actually just did uh, our, our first uh, quality inspection last night, and, and, and the first shipment is on the way. But it's really incredible. And basically what he's looking to do is to empower people in Pakistan, starting with like 350 rupees, which I think is a little over $3. That is the, the the down payment before they you know before they get the product. It's total seven hundred, so about about six dollars and change, and they can be in the business, uh, and they they can make like twenty five percent profit and more depending upon the volume. But basically, it's set up so that somebody can buy a device, show other people. If they sell four of them, they got their money back, and it's going to teach a lot of people about business. There's actually one hundred and eighty million people in Pakistan. So he's looking for about 1,800 people that would be sort of leaders that would be in charge of exposing a million people to this. I don't know where it's going to go, and uh, we don't know whether it's going to be a success or not, but we are going to learn a lot. And uh, he just uh, recently, the, the competition, that the reason why he started, uh, he came in uh, at the 25, and then he went to a thing, and he came number five out of 25 and won, a, won an award for, uh, I think it's called the Startup Cup in, in Pakistan. So, yeah, it's, it's pretty amazing. And, and, you know, we do all these things. Uh, one day I was on a, on a bus back from Guangzhou and I'm doing a, a, a conference call on Skype from the back of the bus. It's really, really, you know, he's in his radio studio and I'm in the back of a bus, uh, you know, having a great conversation and talking about business. That's great. Uh, it's amazing stuff that's happening. I think uh, I really appreciate your time coming on today, PJ. And maybe you could share a tip for listeners to maybe get started with 
international business? Or? Well, I think, you know, for me, one of the most important things for me is international travel. When you start traveling, it changes your life. I only wish I had started sooner, but I, I recommend it to a lot of people and I see lives changed all the time. Once once they start traveling, it, it's very difficult to stop. Yeah, yeah I have to... I'll course i think i have to second that right like, I, <laughs> the other thing that i would like to add to that is if you can't travel another way is to make friends on facebook but don't make friends of people who are all the same as you make friends with different people make friends in countries that for instance in pakistan a lot of people think I'm crazy to have Pakistani friends because they think they're all terrorists. Well, you know, the people I know are among the most peaceful people. They would do anything for me. And you get to find out that people around the world are similar everywhere. There's good people and bad people. And really take some time to get to know different people, whether it be through Facebook. And it will open up a lot of opportunities and it really will really change your life. It's, it's amazing. Yeah, I think there's still this like these fears of the unknown of other cultures and people. And yeah, I think first, I agree. I, firstly, meeting them face to face by traveling. But yeah, of course, on Facebook and social media is, is, is very powerful, too, if, if you can't do it in person. Well, one thing is definitely experience things for yourself, because, you know, especially in the Western world, people have certain perceptions of how things are. And let me tell you, they're, they're not even close. I remember when I first went to Bangkok, you know, people are telling me that, you know, it's really dirty and sewage in the street. And when I arrived, it, it you know, it's a city that was more modern than the city that I came from in, in upstate New York and really, really pretty incredible. And, and I ended up building a great business from there that, you know, ended up sprawling across Asia from, you know, Thailand to Philippines, Hong Kong. And, and now what I've done is I've, I've sort of consolidated and I'm just focusing on building relationships in China. I don't have any offices anymore. I'm looking for location independence. I want to be able to work from Starbucks or from a park where we are now. It's really incredible what you can do these days with technology. Uh, and in China, sometimes it's a little challenging because you need the VPN to get around the firewall. But lately, 4G service has been pretty good. And uh, I, I pretty much can work from anywhere. And I've been experimenting a lot. By the end of the year, I hope to be to totally location independent and can work from anywhere, any country and do whatever I have to do. Awesome. Yeah, same here. I, I'm, I'm working hard, too, on being location independent. And like today, right, it's a beautiful day outside before lunch and we're just having a great conversation here and and thanks for sh sharing pj so i'm sure people are motivated by your words uh, how can people reach out to you well the the best way is uh if you want to connect directly with me i use wechat it's the best communication tool in the world if you haven't used it you really need to download it and try it and it's uh pj dash entrepreneur you can also add me on skype with also pj dash entrepreneur or email me at pj at pj-entrepreneur.com. Cool. All right. Thanks so much, Mr. Entrepreneur. And uh, that's a wrap. Thanks for coming on. Thank you, PJ, for coming on today. I hope people enjoyed his adventure. And that's what it is. That's what life is. And that's what business is, is getting out there, taking some chances, getting out of your comfort zone, and you're finding your element, seeing where life takes you. I know it's pretty scary, I've been there, but I think once you get started, it's hard to look back. So um, if you guys liked it, uh, you know, reach out, thank PJ, or or uh, let me know too. Also, I did check iTunes reviews, not, no new ones. So that's a really great way. I do like, I'm always motivated to get warm and fuzzy inside if I get a five-star review. So if, if you like the show and, and like what's going on, the best, one of the better ways to support it is to uh, go in there in iTunes and and leave a review. Also, don't forget, I mentioned at the beginning of the show, but a reminder of the webinar, April 2nd, 9 a.m. Hong Kong time. Check it out at globalfromasia.com slash webinar. Till next week, keep exploring and let's find ourselves. To get more info about running an international business via Hong Kong, please visit our website at www.globalfromasia.com. That's www.globalfromasia.com. Also, be sure to subscribe to our iTunes feed. Thanks for tuning in.